Obviously, uh, life begins at the moment of fertilization when a single sperm fuses with an ovum to form a one-celled embryo or zygote. At this moment, the ultimate character of that indi new individual is decided. The Koran recorded these facts 1,400 years ago. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Koran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolute, absolutely no scientific training. The advances of modern developmental biology raise as many questions as they solve. And the physicians and scientists of today are perhaps more than ever before in need of the wisdom and counsel of scholars and religious leaders. It is not surprising then that we relook to, uh, to our holy scriptures for help and enlightenment. From what stuff hath he created him? From a sperm drop, he hath created him and then moldeth him in due proportions. Surah 80, Ayah 18 and 19. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Professor Goenger. Uh, the paper is open for the discussion now, and we have only... The consequences and dangers of promiscuous sexual relationships and deviant sexual practices have been expressed in this hadith some four could I have the next slide please and I hope it is in the it is correct the lewdness will not exist among people until they appear as a common practice and plagues a new disease which did not exist before will spread among them يقول الرسول 1400 years ago صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم تظهر الفاحشة في قوم قط حتى يعلنوا بها إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون والأوجاع التي لم تكن مضت في أسلافهم الذين مضوا The word lewdness encompasses adultery, fornication, I'm told, homosexuality bestiality and all other sexual perversions and it is not wide stretched of, of any imagination that we should not consider herpes and AIDS as clear examples of new diseases and indeed at the present time new diseases for which we have no cure thank you very much thank you very much professor Perso, for your very interesting subject and uh, I think there's a lot of discussions that this will be postponed to the end. Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo about 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing. The key word in both is al guid At this stage, it is known to no one except Allah. The rapid growth and dramatic changes which occur after the bones have been clothed by muscles have been mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago. Ayah 79, I mean Surah 79, Ayah 32 states, also in the context of creation, and the mountains hath he firmly fixed. Similar mention of mountains is found in several other surahs. 
It is permissible to interpret this to imply that mountains are rooted and that modern, ge and modern geophysics has established deep crustal roots for the axial parts of mountain systems at converging plate boundaries. We need research into the history of early Middle Eastern oral traditions to know whether, in fact, such historical events have been reported. If there is no such record, it strengthens the belief that God transmitted through Muhammad bits of his knowledge that we have only discovered for ourselves in recent times. 1,400 years ago, when the world was immersed in darkness, the Quran was revealed which brought light to a beleaguered world. And whereas the earlier books came with many scientific mistakes due to the hand of man having delved into them, the Quran had none of these contradictions. The world thought there could be no reconciliation between religion and science. But the Quran mentioned many scientific facts in great detail, like how a human being developed in the mother's womb, and described other scientific facts which amaze the world's renowned scientists and scientific community. Such was the impact of these revelations that the first Islamic medical conference was held at the Arab League building, Cairo, Egypt, on the 26th of September, 1985.